How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. This is the HSF Tools HP96 thermal camera. It has a three and a half inch screen, 96 by 96 pixel thermal imager. For thermal cameras, I say the price is unbeatable for something with a three and a half inch screen. You can get a little bit cheaper if you use those guns with a smaller screen, like two and a half inch or one and a half inch. I think this is the smallest screen that you want if you want it to be used for for debugging purposes. I don't think I've ever had an instance where I'm like, hey, I really wish I have four times the resolution in looking at this image and then it would help me debug better. Let me go back and unbox this, show you what's included and also show you the features. And then I'll show you what I'll use this for, for debugging thermal issues. Thank you card, a calibration certificate, user manual, and the device itself has a little buckle here. Ooh. A fully self-contained product with its own screen. Let's see what else we have in here. USB-C cable and a hand strap. Mount screw for a tripod. The outer shell has this soft touch feel to it. This is not a paint because on the side you can just peel it open. This makes it so that the surface is very rugged even with long-term use. Press and hold language. First off, I like how there is a handle for your thumb so you can hold on to it and point at things. This is a thermal camera, a regular camera, and also a flashlight on the left. Notice the cameras are recessed a little bit in case you set it down. It won't immediately scratch anything up. So when you open this up, the inner side is softer than the outer shell. So I would actually put the camera in this way, but I actually really wish there is some cover to cover over this and also over the screen. There is a quarter inch mounting hole for tripods so I can screw this mounting plate on there. The device just have two buttons on the top, a power button and a picture taking or video taking button. Just press and hold this to turn it on. It boots up. There are a bunch of controls on the left and right side. There are saved images on this picture looking button here. And I took some pictures and videos already. We can actually go in here and play it. It records audio, but it does not have a speaker to play the audio. There's this gear sign for changing settings, temperature measurement settings, temperature range. You can set it to a lower range or a higher range all the way up to 662 Fahrenheit. Alarm settings, which will give you an alarm if it goes above a certain temperature. On the right side, we can turn on the sender marker, the hot marker, and the cold marker. So this is the hot one. We can turn that one off. The cold one, turn it off. The center one, turn that off. So we can pick which one we want to see. Sometimes it gets in the way, so maybe you only want to see the cold, like in this instance right here. I'm interested in what's right underneath the door and we're seeing 60 degrees Fahrenheit. But I kind of want to see what the temperature is surrounding it. So I'm going to do the center as well. The center is 64. So we can see the cold is, you know, like about five degrees colder than the surrounding. The second icon is how you want to view the thermal image. Just push that. I don't actually like the very first setting here because it's kind of fuzzy and it actually does not blend together the visual visual data with the thermal data. The thermal data is only 96 by 96, so it's kind of fuzzy. I can move it around. There's a scooter right here. And because it's about the same temperature, we can't really see it. But when I go and turn on the blending of the visual data, we can see the outline of the scooter now. So I like this mode a lot better. And then there are other modes that you can use as well, such as just the center has a blended mode where the outside is just real visual mode. The next one is more of a blend where you have 25% thermal data, 50% thermal data, 75% thermal data. And then when you finally go to this, this is 100% thermal data. There's a, yet another mode, which is just visual data here. By default, I would use this one. Then there is different coloring mode of the thermal data. If we click this icon, we can do black and white with white being the coldest and black being the hottest. And then we have the opposite of that, or we can do what we've been using, which is kind of like an iron look. Cold is blue, red is hot, but when it's really, really hot, it turns white. And then we have yet a different color scheme, yet another color scheme here. This really highlights the cold down there. Whichever color scheme that you prefer, there's several of them. There is a temperature setting. So if I want more of the blue to show up, I can slide this range to make that happen. But we can just go back to the default by pressing this one up here. If you want to record a picture, you just click it once. It shows up here and then it disappears. If you want to record a video, you just press and hold it. 
and then this red dot will appear showing that it's recording a video. Let me go in front of it. Just to record some audio to let you know what this sounds like. To me, the mic sounds reasonably good. All you need is to use it as a reference. So when you're recording things, you can go, oh yeah, this is the bottom of the door with type B insulation. Just give yourself some notes. So when you're playing back the video, you know what you did. Sometimes old breakers break and they heat up a lot more than others. To demonstrate this, I've been charging with one of the breakers, so it's going to get quite warm. But this is something you would see if you have an older breaker, it has too much resistance. And even if you're not pumping a lot of current through it, it would heat up more than usual. And I'm going to show you my charger here. The center is 86 degrees Fahrenheit. On top, it's quite warm, 106. And there's even a hot spot right in there, 116 degrees. And then we can check out the breakers here. Look at that. And we see a hot spot of 95 degrees, which is within range. We can also check out the cable, which is 105. It's warm to the touch, but not hot. This is very useful for checking anything out that's electronic. Usually, if it overheats, there's something wrong with it. If it's over like 130 degrees, it probably is broken. Whether it being on a PCB or if it's a circuit breaker, when it gets that hot, you probably should take a closer look. You can also drag from the top and you'll see some extra information. The date and time, turn on the flashlight and also change to night or day mode. When you go to one of the menus, the backgrounds are all white. This will hold 30,000 pictures or 20 hours of video. Now the videos are only 640 40 by 480 so it's not a very big video so that's why I can hold so much with only 2.33 gigabytes the battery is 76% full right now but it can operate for four hours on a full charge also you can change the brightness of the screen so we can go back and it's brighter now if you want to change the zoom you tap it once the zoom will show up here we can then drag it closer and closer all the way up to 4x you want to adjust this to whatever you're measuring right now my hands about one foot away roughly so i'm going to adjust it to there one foot away and you can see the thermal data matches a lot better with the visual data you can also use this to see if something is turned on this is my entertainment center and you look at that thing back there it's a little bit warm i haven't turned it on for a really long time and this turns out is an apple tv front of it is 72 degrees so it's room temperature but surrounding it is a lot cooler right 63 degrees when that happens you'll know that it's using standby power so you can just kind of look around the house and just sweep around and you can easily see if anything is turned on if you guys are interested in getting this low cost thermal camera check out my affiliate link down in the video description below thanks for watching this video until next time